Good morning. If you were at Central on Sunday, you know that we had a great Easter celebration. Wonderful music, inspiring preaching, great fellowship, and a time of Bible study. Today, I want us to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning with verse 12. If you have your Bibles, let me encourage you to turn to that scripture passage. Once again, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning with verse 12. Before we read the scripture, I want us to think about a question. What difference does Easter make? It's a well-known fact that from the beginning there were those who doubted. On Easter Sunday, when the chief priest heard that the tomb was empty, they called the men who had been guarding the tomb and offered them money if they would say that the disciples of Jesus had stolen his body during the night. That is recorded for us in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, verses 11 through 15. Many have called it the original Easter conspiracy. It was the first, but not the last. So let me ask the question, what difference does Easter make? Suppose we switch the question around and ask it this way. What difference would it make if Jesus had not risen from the dead? What would be different in our world today if we found out conclusively that Jesus was still dead? Or how about this? What if someone conclusively proved they had discovered the bones of Jesus? What difference would that make? The question may sound shocking and even blasphemous, but I still want to ask it. What if Jesus did not rise from the dead? That's not a new question. The question, what if, has been asked for nearly 2,000 years. It's a biblical question, one that we can find in our scripture this morning. In these verses, 12 through 20, seven times Paul uses the little word if. He is raising the question of contrary assumption in order to show us how much hangs on the bodily resurrection of our Lord. To borrow from the vernacular, this is the whole ball game right here. So I want us to consider this morning some statements that I am going to make based on scripture. Turn with me if you haven't already done so to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I'm going to read beginning with verse 12. What we need to be reminded of this morning is that an astounding miracle lies at the heart of our faith. We believe something absolutely incredible, that a man who was dead came back to life on the third day. We believe that God raised him up from the dead. That is a stupendous thing to say. Sometimes we Christians forget how amazing this sounds. What if, what if, what if Paul answers that question by showing us four disastrous consequences if Christ did not rise from the dead? Each one deserves our careful attention because the, if these things are true, then the resurrection is false. Look with me, if you will, at verses 15 and 16 in our scripture this morning from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 15 begins this way. 
Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he did not raise up if in fact the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. The first statement that I want to present to you is this. If there is no resurrection, our preaching is without purpose. Focus on just one word, useless. Some translations say vain. Well, let's consider that. The word vain or useless means without content. It means that all we have learned has come to nothing. No amount of education, no amount of preaching, no amount of Bible study can compensate if at the heart of what we believe is a gigantic falsehood. If the tomb is not empty, we are wasting our time. The second statement comes from verse 17. If there's no resurrection, our faith is without forgiveness. Listen as I read verse 17. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. The word futile is different from the word useless. The word futile means that which produces no results. Think of it this way. We like to say that Christ died for our sins, but how do we know that his death accomplished anything? That's why the resurrection is all important. Easter is God's great amen to Good Friday. Jesus cried out, it is finished. God said amen when he raised his son from the dead. And because he is alive forevermore, we can know that our sins are forgiven forever. That is the great issue in Paul's mind. Are we truly forgiven or not? If Christ has been raised, the answer is yes. If Christ is still in the tomb, Unfortunately, the answer is no. Now let's go to verse 18. If there is no resurrection, our death is without deliverance. Verse 18 reads this way. Then also those, those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. Paul says that Christians who have died have fallen asleep in Christ. The Greek word for falling asleep is the word komio, from which we get another Greek word, komatera, from which we get the English word cemetery. In the beginning, cemetery was a distinct, distinctively Christian word. It means the sleeping place. That's where Christians buried their dead in the sleeping place. Why did they say that? Because we know that when we go to sleep, we expect to wake up eventually. Even so, Christians have always believed that one day those who have died in Christ will wake up in the coming great day of resurrection. Paul answers very clear, clear, beloved. If Christ has not been raised, then death wins. If he is still in the tomb, there is no hope for anyone. This life is all there is, and all who are dead will stay dead forever. Now let's go to verse 19 as we consider this statement. If there is no resurrection, our service without, is without significance. Verse 19 reads, If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men, are all people, the most pitiable. 
For Paul, this is the ultimate argument because he means that if Christ is not raised, we're just fooling ourselves. If Christ is still in the tomb, then all of the skeptics are right. If there is no foundation for our faith, then we are nothing but self-deluded fools. If Christ is not raised, then we have no message to preach. If Christ is not raised, there is no God to hear our prayers. If Christ is not raised, we are not saved. If Christ is not raised, then let's bring the missionaries home. If Christ is not raised, let's close every church and let's sell the property. If Christ is not raised, then every Christian for over 2,000 years has been wrong. And so we come to the end of Paul's ifs. If Christ has not been raised, our preaching is without purpose. Our faith is without forgiveness. Our death is without deliverance. Our service is without significance. If, if, if. Is there any answer? Any hope, any reason to believe in the resurrection of the dead? Well, look with me at verse 20. Verse 20 begins with two little words, but now. Here is Paul's answer. Clear as a bell, bright as the sun, truth with no mixture of doubt so ever. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Consider how much hangs on those two little words, but now. The resurrection of Jesus, our coming resurrection, and the resurrection of all those who have died in faith. All of it depends <clears throat> on those two little words. But now, the term first fruits refers to the first part of any harvest. For the Israelites, it meant the first part of the barley harvest that was offered to the Lord. It was a happy day when the first fruits were offered because it meant that there was a bigger harvest to come. Even so, the resurrection of Jesus over 2,000 years ago is God's way of saying, beloved, one day all my children, all my children will rise from the dead. No one, not one of them will be left in the grave. Every single one will be raised, immortal, incorruptible, perfected, completed, glorified, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is our hope, our faith, our confidence. This is the faith of our ancestors who believed then what we believe now. You see, we see the present. God sees the future. Therefore, our preaching has purpose. Our faith has forgiveness. Our death has deliverance. Our service has significance. And in that great getting up morning, we will all rejoice together with our tears gone forever and death a distant memory. What a happy day that will be. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen and amen and amen. As I always do, let me encourage you to continue to pray for Central Baptist Church. I believe God is up to something here. I hope you believe that as well. Continue to pray for Pastor Marcus as he leads us in our transition. Pray for our deacon leadership 
as they give leadership as well. Let me encourage you to continue to pray for the staff. We love Central. We love each other. And we love you. And we're so thankful for the opportunity we have to serve our risen Savior and in serving you, serving his people as well. God bless you. I hope you have a great week and I look forward to seeing you again on Sunday.